Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. With full heart and full voice, please join me in singing number 39, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 39. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Today is Gadaute Sunday, or Rejoice Sunday. We rejoice because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is in our midst. Our God is <coughs> present to us, ready to forgive us, to nourish us, to forgive us. We place ourselves now in his holy presence. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and you, you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. I not in my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us, let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation 
and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example in, of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question. Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. As Father said in his opening blessing, today is Gaudete Sunday, and Gaudete means rejoice. And so we can see we have the pink candle lit on the wreath. Father is wearing his rose-colored vestments. We have other things that we could do to help celebrate this day as well that are allowed at this particular Mass. And it's all because we are halfway through our Advent season. And the church gives us this time to relax and to rejoice at the in, in anticipation of what is yet to come. In the first two Sundays of Advent, we have been watchful and awake. We have been preparing the way of the Lord. And today, the church says, rejoice. Rejoice because the birth of the Emmanuel is near. And we wait. We wait to celebrate his coming. Just as those in the time of Jesus were waiting to have the Messiah reveal himself to them. And that is what the gospel is about today. We have St. John, who was imprisoned by Herod Antipas, and who had his disciples there, and he, he told his disciples to go to Jesus with the question that we heard in the, in the, the gospel. And uh, what I've come to find out is that there are two interpretations about why John did this. The first interpretation uh, is supported by uh, such people as St. Pope John Paul II. So um, he says in his book, Jesus, Son and Savior, a Catechesis of the Creed, that John the Baptist, in his imprisonment, began to, in his suffering, began to have doubts, and his faith was shaken. And he sent his apostles to Jesus to get confirmation and bring that back to him, that Jesus was the one, to build up his strength and to help him finish out his term in prison, a term that he knew was going to end in his death. And then there's a second interpretation. This one is supported by Saints John Chrysostom 
and St. Jerome, both who lived in the late 300s. And what they said was John knew who Christ was. And they list a number of points to support what they were saying. First of all, they said that in Matthew, third chapter of Matthew's Gospel, John the Baptist hesitates when Jesus comes and asks him to baptize him. He says, Lord, I am the one who should be baptized by you. And Jesus says, for now, let it be so. And then later in that same chapter, after the baptism of Jesus, the skies open and the dove descends, representing the Holy Spirit. And he hears the voice of God say, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. And then they say that in John chapter 1, verse 30, he says of Jesus, he is the one of whom I said, he comes after me, but ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. And they go on to list about four or five more scripture readings just like this. And so this was kind of new to me. I hadn't heard that particular interpretation before. And so I just thought you might be interested in as well. Now, which one doesn't matter if we believe one or the other? No, the church really hasn't taken a stand on it. They obviously don't know what John was thinking either. But the truth of the matter is, it isn't about John. It's not about John the Baptist. It's about Jesus Christ and his establishing the fact to everyone who came to listen to him and who saw what he was doing, that he is the Messiah. And to dispel the doubt that are in the hearts of the true believers that are out there, he did all of these signs and wonders. And so in this season of Advent, if we have any doubt in our own hearts, if we have times that are hard for us and, and we begin to wonder about our faith, let us remember Jesus and what he said to the apostles of St. John. Let us remember that he is always there for us, that there is nothing that he can't do, and that he loves us more than we can possibly imagine. He will always be there for us, and it is another reason that for today at least, we can say, Gaudete, rejoice. The Creed, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
And now, as God's faithful people, we bring before him these our prayers and petitions. For all parishioners of the Archdiocese of Omaha, that we will be open and accepting to the inconveniences caused by the changes in Mass times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, as we look ahead to the future and make plans to build a parish center, that we may be guided by the Holy Spirit and work together to bring this project to completion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout our nation in these tough, troubled times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people throughout the world who are suffering from extreme heat, drought, flooding, fires, storms, and other natural disasters, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are ill, especially for Cheryl Liebig Abelgen, Karen Blauser, Norbert Loretta Caesar, Elaine Etnauer, Linda Hammer, Mary Juretsky, Charlie Jasper, Rita Murphy, Calvin Mustard, Larry Nagorski, Dave Peterson, Mike Trant, Chet Walsh, and Hannah Weasley. That they may experience the healing presence of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for Fred Ferringer, Mildred Mark, Dean Melcher, Father Bob Schoman, Dean Thomas, Thompson, and Donald Zorns, that they may know the joys of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more vocations to the priesthood and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for Jim Sprunk, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for much needed moisture, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our unspoken needs and intentions, let us pause and pray to the Lord in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal God, Father and Lord of us all, as a people who rejoice that your Son as the Messiah has come among us, we lift up to you in a spirit of faith these are prayers and petitions, asking that you grant them as you will through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the gifts and the table are being prepared, Please join in singing number 40, Come, Lord Jesus, number four, zero. There is a second collection today, so that will be taken up after the first one.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right here. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing of the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Isidore and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed of a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
As a community, we come to receive the Lord. As we come, please sing number 48, Beyond the Moon and Stars, number 4, 8.
holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. We extend our deepest sympathy to Connie Jackson and her sister and brother, whose mother, Mildred Marsh, was buried from St. Isidore Church last Wednesday. We also extend our deepest sympathy to Betty Thompson and her daughters, Heather and Hillary, whose husband and father, Dean, was buried from St. Isidore Church on Friday. We also extend our deepest sympathy to Dean's brother, David, and his wife, Joyce Thompson, and his sisters. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Father Joe said that we did not have a very good turnout at the church cleaning last Tuesday. He said he was very disappointed. He does want to give a special thanks to those who did come. It's a big job if a lot of people show up. It's a really big job if only a few do but he wants to let them know that they did a great job and he wants to thank them very much. And finally, the Knights of Columbus are conducting another blood drive. You may sign up for it after all the Masses this weekend. And included in the bulletin this weekend is our first capital campaign newsletter. You heard that correct. Our feasibility study produced very good results and the Archdiocese has given us the green light to proceed with a capital campaign to build our parish center. We'll hold back to observe Lent and to celebrate Christmas and New Year's. Then we're going to get the ball rolling. That being said, our campaign consultants are already working in the background, creating a campaign infrastructure. Our campaign team leaders for prayer, events, thanks, youth, ambassadors, and communications were all trained this past week. Many of you signed up for these teams, and your team leaders are already trying to connect with each of you. The newsletter shares that we'll kick off the campaign on January 12th with a volunteer organizational meeting. I hope that even more folks will have joined the team by that day. Realizing this vision and building our parish center is going to take all of us. While we're about a month from the formal kickoff, please start thinking and praying about how you'll get involved in this campaign process. As I said, realizing this vision is going to take us all. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us go forth singing together number 43, People Look East, number 4-3.
Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. 